Deanna Wong. Deanna is a singer, songwriter, actor, and producer. Her work ranges from acting in offbeat fringe-esque theater shows to writing soulful ballads and playful, sultry jazz tunes with her band. Last June, she released her debut single, I Could Walk Away, and her second single, The Fire, is set for release this year. Currently, Deanna is working towards launching a blog with the Ethnic Sisters, producing and acting in an original theater production and recording her next single. Please welcome to the stage, Deanna Wong. Hi. Are you a doctor yet? It's a pretty common question asked among the Asian population. Contrary to popular belief, I am not a doctor, nor do I have any plans of ever being one. I'm also not very good at science, and I'm not really good at math. The next slide that you're going to see is a pretty accurate representation of my math skills. And to the shock of my high school classmates, I barely passed math, 52%. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Although failing at the first two stereotypes of uh, being a doctor and being good at math, I, I do, however, play piano. And yes, just, if you're wondering, I'm a classical player. However, the little girl that you're going to see up on that screen smiling and hugging the piano, that, that's not me. <laughs> I was kicking and screaming because as a kid I wasn't interested in playing Beethoven. I was much more interested in being a rock star. So how did a little Asian girl from Port Moody grow up to be a fringe performing, theater major, jazz singing, Italian man loving, Kitsilino dweller? <laughs> well, let me begin with my early experience and exposure to North American Asian performers, Lucy Liu. Charlie's Angels was one of my favorite films to watch growing up. I wanted to be just like Lucy, but to my dismay, I learned that Lucy was not really an angel and she didn't actually work for Charlie. She was an actor. So I thought, how do I become an actor? Well, I should probably get an agent and go to theater school. So I did those things and in university, one of my assignments was to watch a movie that I could be cast in based on aesthetics. My options were pretty limited. So I opted for Memoirs of a Geisha. And another realization came to me, there are very few roles written for Asian women. And worse, roles that are not open to Asian women that could be. So what could I be cast in if I wanted to be an actor? Would I one day only play the doctor or news reporter or that smart techie girl? Would I have to be Mr. Kim from South Park? <laughs> I do have pretty good Mr. Kim, so Matt Stone or Trey Parker ever hiring, I would, I would happily voice him. <laughs> which brings me to the Ethnic Sisters, which uh, Mandara mentioned in my bio. We were the only ethnic girls in a class of 40 at Capilano University theater program. And to explain ourselves, I'm going to read an excerpt from our blog site. We call ourselves the Ethnic Sisters. We are feminists of color, finding our voices and challenging racial and gender stereotypes. This is all while finding out what it means to be young artists living on our own two feet in the city. Hashtag flawless. Hashtag too cool to be cute. If there are any inquiries about marriage, please buy us each of Michael Kors watch first if you want to be taken seriously. So that's us there. And if there are any inquiries about marriage, you can uh, apply with your resume on our website. It's www.ethnicsisters.wordpress.com. You can also follow our blog. So I have to admit that I messed up my slides a bit. <laughs> but the next slide, I believe, yes, is um, from a play that I did called Mighty Qualified Plenty Smote, which is a really important play for me. I played it. Japanese woman that grew up in an internment camp and she's bought by her future husband and she burns down the church which she used to be married in and with her and her fiance in it and then she sells her soul to the devil. The role was really important to me because a lot of the response we got was surprise. There's an Asian female singing the blues in a leading role? It was like a phenomenon and I kind of realized that I want to keep making more of these phenomenons because I, I love being on stage mainly because I'm a little bit narcissistic and I love the sound of my own voice, but also because I get to be the best version of me. But throughout the years I've been performing, I've never had a role model to look up to. No other actor, singer, or producer that was Asian and known in North America. No equivalent Beyonce or J-Lo or Barbara Streisand that was Chinese, which means to do what I'm doing, I kind of have to be okay with paving the path. So I want to take a moment 
those guys up there were, were my band, and they're just marvelous guys. Um, so why isn't there someone like there like that out there? I'm not completely sure, but maybe I think it's because of fear. Fear from the studios and labels that that isn't marketable. Fear from the women who want it but are afraid to be the pioneer, the captain of their destiny. But I think that fear is to be embraced. And in the words of Stevie Nicks, I'm pretty radical, you know? So for those of you that watch Game of Thrones, I hope you appreciate this. Khaleesi is the Dothraki word for queen. And like Khaleesi, I've been so fortunate to have a council of, of mentors that have encouraged me to keep pushing the envelope and, and embrace me different. And all my life, I never wanted to be a princess. I never wanted to be a queen. I wanted to be the queen. And why this mentality? My mother, she taught me to kick down doors instead of opening them and instilled in me, she told me, I won't give you everything that you want, but instead I'll give you the the opportunities to achieve anything you want. So, my slides got messed up, but I wanted to talk about uh, Mindy Killing and being a brash and unapologetic Asian woman. And she was pictured before with a very attractive Italian male, which leads me to here. It's, uh, the photo before was taken three years ago, and it was when I met a guy who had completely changed my life, an Italian guy. And if you were listening before, I am a lover of Italians. And he taught me something about passion. And who better to learn passion from than an Italian? And I learned that passion, whether for a person, a place, or a thing, it's not pretty, and it's not always easy. And it was that long-term relationship Barbie photo. That's real love, you guys. Um, but this chaos, it makes great art, and great art and beautiful life. Around that time, I wrote two songs that would be pivotal in my career. These songs put me in a place that was pretty uncomfortable. I was scared to release them. And it was scary to have a piece of me on the internet that was so freely open for people to ridicule and, and love me at the same time. So it taught me a lot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> so fear, it taught me a lot about why I was doing this. Why am I fighting an uphill battle? Why didn't I accept a high paying job from the prestigious company that offered it to me? Because why did I want to be a starving artist? It's because of love and because of passion. And fear is the greatest motivator. Whenever I'm faced with a dilemma, I always, always choose a path that scares me because I know I can do anything that I set my mind to. And if I'm scared, I know it means something to me. Fear I embrace, but failure I never let cross my mind. And I believe there are no failures, but only lessons. My great-grandfather came here to work on the Canadian Pacific Railway. Whenever doubt tries to come into my mind, I think of him. I think of his fear, of his courage coming to a country he knew nothing about to start a better life for his family. And his friends probably told him he was crazy. But when I think of that, I don't think my dreams are that big. I can conquer anything, and I can change the world. I can be the first. So I have to do a slide on love. And I don't know if I can fully articulate what love means to me. But this is my dog, Haas. I think he's really cute. He's actually quite an ornery and grumpy creature. He's kind of like creature from Harry Potter. <laughs> but he's my favorite person in the world. He's the first one that woke up when our neighbor's house caught on fire. He's told me to turn around, turn around when there's a bear. He bit my ex, so thanks. Um, <laughs> he's happy to be my teddy bear any night. He's my number one guy, and he never lets my boyfriend forget it. Thank you.